My name is Mitchell, and I'm going to show you a leg workout that you can do at home with no equipment or very minimal equipment. Let's get started. So the first exercise is the squat. First of all, we're going to go over the fundamentals. It all starts at the feet. You want to make sure that you have your arches built up. You don't want to collapse. You want to keep the arch. You want your knees to be neutral. You don't want them to buckle in. You don't want them to buckle out too much. Some are right in the middle. Then you want to focus on the hips. You don't want to have your hips tilted back too much. You don't want them to go forward too much. Some are right in between. You want to keep the core brace, chest up, head up, shoulders rolled back, and you're in the fundamental starting position for the squat. So make sure your feet are flat on the ground. Your heels don't want to come up. You want to make sure that the angle of your shin and the angle of your back are parallel. And lastly, you just want to make sure that your knees aren't caving in or out. You want to make sure that they're staying neutral and not buckling in nor bowing out too far. One way to make the squat more challenging is by adding a resistance band. As you can see, I'm holding it under my feet and at the bottom of a shoulder press position. If I want to add more resistance to the band, I can hold the resistance band overhead like I'm in the top of an overhead press position, and that'll add more resistance to the band. So this is for more advanced people who are looking to build more strength in their squat. So if the body weight squat isn't challenging, go ahead and try this one. So you can also put a band around your knees. This requires a different type of resistance band, but this will allow you to get more glute engagement. So if you're looking to build that booty for the summer, you better put that band around your knees and get squatting. So this is a good way to make a weight bearing squat. You can take a backpack and you can put it on the front or you can even put it on the back. It'll replicate either a front or back squat, and you can put things in the backpack, such as a gallon of water or books or whatever you find that's heavy, and that'll help you make some more resistance. And you can get creative with the ways that you add weight to your squat. In this case, I have my girlfriend, Alana. She is on my back, and I'm just doing some squats with her. It's a little bit more difficult than a barbell because people move around a little bit, so it's not as stable, but it's a good challenge, and you got to work with what you got. So for a hip hinge, it's a movement where you're bending down. The same cues go for the squat in the hip hinge. Your feet, your knees, your hips are all neutral. Core brace, chest up, head up. The only thing moving is your hip. You're gonna be bending down while the torso stays stable and the knees aren't bending. There is a slight bend in the knee as you can see. It's not fully locked because my legs get relaxed and it hurts my knee. But I don't wanna to bend too much because then that is a squat. We wanna keep a nice stable knee while we bend at the hip and hinge at the hip to get down towards the ground. So we call this the hip hinge because it's a movement like a door. The hips are the hinge of the door. The upper body is the wall. The legs are the door. The only thing that moves in a doorway is the hinge of the door. Same should go when you're doing a movement like this with your body. You're simply backing the hips up, keeping the torso straight, and keeping the lower body stable while you bend down to reach towards the ground. It's essential that we move in this way, especially when we have weights in our hand or when we're picking up something like a box or a laundry basket. Moving like this with a nice stable and straight torso will prevent injury. So we can add resistance to this movement with a resistance band. I have one with handles, but if you have a looped resistance band, that one works as well. I just coiled up the handles and wrapped them around my hands a couple times to increase the resistance.
So you can also use a backpack for this one or other objects to hold in your hand while you do the hip hinge exercise. So this is a good way to add more resistance if you're looking for an additional challenge over just your body weight or a resistance band. So there are a lot of good single leg workouts you can do with just your body weight that are going to be very effective, such as the lunge. You can do some walking lunges like I'm doing here. And there are also other variations of the lunge that you can do at home with no equipment necessary. So here we have the alternating lunge standing. If you're limited on space, you could do something like this. And it's a great way to work out the quads, the hamstrings, and the glutes. You can also do the standing lunge without alternating. Uh, it'll be a bit more fatiguing for each leg because there's no rest in between. If you do lunges regularly, I definitely recommend this variation, which is the jumping lunge. Uh, it'll be very good for getting your heart rate up. It's great to add into a hit circuit of some sort. So if you're looking for an additional challenge, definitely give this a try. This is another great variation of the lunge, so you can do the curtsy lunge. On um, the other versions of the lunge, it targets the quads a bit more. This one will allow you to target the glutes, specifically the outer portion of the glutes. So some of the more challenging single leg workouts, such as a single leg squat, are great for developing stability in the leg. So here I'm just up on an elevated surface, slowly drawing down and touching the ground and then coming back up. As you get better at it, you can increase the height of that box. So now I'm dropping down a little bit further, coming down into a deeper single leg squat, and then eventually you'll be working up to the full pistol squat. So Alana can demonstrate the pistol squat much better than I can. And as you can see, she's bringing that leg forward now so that she can go all the way down. So once you get better at doing it on an elevated surface, you can start bringing that leg forward and seeing how far down you can go. One of my favorite single leg workouts to do in the gym, typically with dumbbells, is the Bulgarian split squat. So when you're doing a split squat, you put that back leg up on an elevated surface and you come down like you're doing a lunge. Um, if you, this is too easy for you with your body weight, you can make it more of a plyometric workout where you're jumping and being more explosive. This will definitely get your heart rate up. It's great if you're looking to do cardio or do some sort of circuit training. So here we have the step up. I'm doing the alternating step up here, but of course you could do them non-alternating as well. Um, you just need an elevated surface like a stair or a step or a stool of some sort, and you'll be able to do this one. If you're looking for more of a challenge, you could do the jumping step up. This one will get your heart rate up more and it'll work on your explosive strength in your legs. So if you're looking to be more functional or if you're an athlete, this is a great one for you. Lastly, one of the most challenging single leg workouts is the RDL. That stands for Romanian deadlift. This one, you're hinging at your hip just like the hip hinge exercise before, except you're bringing one leg back and bringing those arms forward to help keep you balanced. Uh, it requires a lot of strength in the hamstrings and it'll be definitely be a challenge of your balance as well. So I hope these exercises were useful to some people because we currently don't have any gyms to go to right now and everyone's struggling to find home workouts to do to stay in shape or not lose their progress. So if you're looking to get a good leg workout in at home, definitely take some of these exercises and you can combine them in a circuit. Uh, you don't have to do them in a circuit if you don't want, but definitely take a good combination of all of these. I'd recommend one squat exercise, one hinge exercise, and maybe two single leg exercises to combine into one full leg workout. Thank you for watching.